I mean, a lot of property actually trades off market. So if you're just jumping on domain or realestate.com, you're probably seeing half of what could be out there. Really? Half? Yeah, around wow. 50% trades off market or, or pre-market. Tammy Sognanich, welcome to Property Insights. Thank you. Thanks for having me. How you going, right? Yeah, good. Thank you. I saw you walking in on the telephone and you're always someone trying to get you to buy something before you're ready. There's always, there's always deals happening. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's uh, like nine o'clock on a first Monday after a public holiday. They're on the, on the game. Because I, I was worried that uh, the markets had dropped off. I think we're still seeing uh, the premium properties. There's still a lot of demand for them. Um, I think a lot of people are kind of sitting on the fence, but they're still active buyers. I'm going to a lot of auctions every week and the good stock is selling. There's still competition on, on property. So... Okay, so you're a buyer's agent. Yes. What does a buyer's agent mean? What, is it, what do you do for the buyer? So a buyer's agent uh, essentially sources, negotiates and facilitates uh, the transaction of a property on behalf of their client. So, you know, we, we go shopping with our client's money and we get them a, a good property. So I'm a shy buyer and, uh, and or busy buyer or um, whatever the reason is, I, maybe just not confident. Um, I ring up Cohen Handler, who you work for. And uh, I say, and they put me on a Tammy. And what's the first question you ask me? Um, generally, what you're looking for. So I like to get an understanding of what a client, you know, wants. What are their sort of must-haves? Whether they're like a young family or a downsizer. Um, and then I'll talk about sort of where their budget is to sort of make sure that their budget aligns with the areas they're looking and and what they're after. And then I'll also ask what properties they've seen that they would have bought. So you get a good understanding of if a client's been active, if they actually have a realistic idea of the market um, and they know sort of what, what property prices are and what their money can get them. I say, so I, I, I basically, and I'm answering your question, I don't have a clue. Like I, 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 I've got a two million bucks. I've got you know, a little family. I want uh, three bedrooms, maybe two bathrooms. Kids are young. Um, I want to live in, um, you, you're Sydney-wide? I'm Eastern Suburbs. Eastern Suburbs, okay. So I want to live in uh, Ramwick because um, it's close to the state school where I want to send my kids. Um, and I'd be interested, i actually would like to be a guy somewhere there's a park because I've got a bloody dog too, so I want to buy a house. If, is it possible, townhouse? There's some um, a detached dwelling? I mean. What, what do you do? Like, how do you would you ring up agents who are selling stuff? How do you find out what it is I might be able to, I might be interested in? Well, any any buyer's agent who's active in the areas they specialize in should sort of know what budgets will get you. Um, so I think you know in Randwick, for example, you'd probably be able to get a good townhouse. Um, definitely not a freestanding house for two million dollars, um, but you could probably get a good yeah three three bedroom apartment with a large outdoor space, or you know like a little townhouse, like a ground floor apartment perhaps. Yeah, a ground yeah. floor garden apartment. Because I've got a dog. I've got a little small dog, and yep. uh, you know, uh, I, I want to make sure you know, the kids will kill me if I don't bring the dog along. So, <laughs> yeah, and so are my missus. So, um, it's, so the process then is that, is that I, you, you interview me, and I, you know, you sort of got a bit of an idea what I'm after. Then what happens? What do you do then? What does a buyer's agent do then? So I engage you. I say, yeah, please, yeah, go go find me a property. Do I have to sign an agreement? What happens? Yes. So we'll ask the question as well whether you're finance approved. Yep. I always say to clients that I meet, uh, if you signed up today and I found you the property of your dreams tomorrow, are you in a position to sign a contract unconditionally? Because the market moves so quickly. And if you've got all your ducks in a row, then you're putting yourself in a better position to be able to get that property. Okay, I've got my approved, Yellow Big Road's approved my home loan. Oh, great. <laughs> okay, it's been approved. And uh, so, I, I, so I can spend up to probably 2.5, I'm stretching myself, but you know, I'm approved for 2.5. I've got the stamp duty, I've got the deposit. I'm ready to go, I'm pre-approved, ready to go. What's the next thing you do? So send an agreement, um, that because we, you know, we work exclusively with buyers. We wanna know that you're serious, that you're gonna commit. Um, once you sign the agreement, we've got the brief, we've got the understanding of what you're after. It's hitting the phones, calling every agent in that area, finding out what stock they might have coming up, what stock they've just sold, if they've met any potential other sellers through the property that they've just sold. Uh, what doors can we get into? And, and how much you charge me? So how much do I have to pay you for this, if, if you're successful? Or do I pay, like, no matter whether you're successful or not, how does it all work? So you only pay if you're successful. Mm -hmm. which, and most buyers agents generally char charge a retainer upfront of a few, like two or $3,000, um, which sort of locks in your spot. A good buyers agent won't take on two people with the same brief. You don't want clients who are competing with each other. And you wanna know that if, 
I'm working with you, you're like, you've got my best interest at heart and, and you're going to act solely for me, not sort of have other people competing for it. Yeah, in other words, you're not going to get another dude who's looking for two and a half million dollars to buy something in Ramwick, maybe a townhouse with three bedrooms. Correct. Correct. So, uh, because uh, you're looking after me. Exactly. You know, you don't want something to come on the market and then you have two clients on the same property. It could get extremely awkward. Totally. So um, I'd be pretty pissed off. So exactly. and how much, what do you charge? What's the fee once you succeed? Well, what do I have to pay you? Fees fees range, you know, anywhere from one point five to two point five percent. Probably for you, Mark, I charge you three percent. Um, but you know, it's I'm probably wouldn't sign it. <laughs> I go find good now. Now you just told me that I can get it for one and a half. I go find the one and a half person. <laughs> well, you know, the one and a half person is probably going to cost you a lot more money than uh, a good buyer's agent can. But yes, um, so you know that that's just the sort of the fees range. range between one and a half and yeah. two and a half sort of thing. There's yeah. also there's also options to do fixed fees or, or work on different ranges. There's a whole different way you can kind of structure fees. But you, but it's sort of what you're sort of saying is that there's some negotiation room for movement in 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 the number between one and a half and two and a half. But at the end of the day, I'm I me the buyer. I have to pay the buyer's agent. That makes sense. Okay, I'm paying paid the agent. So in your area, which is eastern suburbs, where does that extend to? What are we talking about? I I specialize anywhere from Vaucluse through to sort of Paddington, Surrey Hills, and down to like Maroubra. Yeah, so you would include, would that include Ramwick? Yes. Yep. Coogee, Maroubra, yep. maybe Matraville or Daisyville, a few of those sorts. Of I, I sort of, there's another guy in our office who specializes more in that Matraville area. So yeah. I just kind of do down to Maroubra and then back up. So we're talking sort of fairly high price stuff. So relatively speaking, particularly when you talk about Vaucluse, but if you, you know, it gets more affordable as you, you know, move further south. What is happening with that market right now? So what's going on out there? Are these scary interest rate discussions, are they affecting vendors? Are vendors start, starting to say, shit, we better start trying to meet the market? Or are the vendors still saying, no, that's the price I want, get me that price? There's there's a bit of both. There's definitely, there's a lot of negative media, as I mentioned, and, and you know, the media loves just publicizing all the negative points and you know they love the drama of it all and a lot of people are reading this and they're getting scared a lot of people are sitting on the fence so it's it's a mixed batch at the moment I think it's going to be an interesting year for everyone with what's happening um, and I think a lot of people are just kind of going to, going to sit back at the moment and watch what's happening when you say a lot of people, you mean your clients, the buyers, or uh, just the a vendors? lot of just a lot of buyers in general. And I think vendors are probably, you know, they're probably hearing from the real estate agent side that the market's going to tank. The market's going to tank. You need to sell now, now, now. So there's probably, a, you know, going to be a bit of stock coming on. I think especially after the holidays. Obviously, a lot of people traveling. They're going away now. They might sort of think, okay, as soon as the holidays are over, let's put our property in the market. Let's try get the last surge before if they, if they feel like it's going to drop. So like when you say traveling, you're talking about people going to go to Europe for the European holidays, not, maybe the July school holidays here in Australia, but a lot of Australians, maybe in your postcodes, um, go off to Europe um, and they have a holiday, which is something they haven't been able to do for a couple of years. Uh, are you saying that when they come back, which is sort of going somewhere between the end of July and end of August, at the end of the European holidays, which is that going to be our spring, that there will be more activity. Do you expect there to be more activity? Because this used to be an old saying, sell in May and go away. And people go away, and then the, the activity has started again just before the spring, like the middle of August, you know, yeah. particularly the property markets. In those days, not these days, but the Wentworth Courier, which was a paper, an actual paper, was got quite thin during that period. Then come about the middle of August, it's starting to get thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. And then lots of properties are on the market for sale. Lots of vendors are saying, okay, now's the time to sell because it's a beautiful time. Weather, my place of painting is going to look great because I've got flowers and all that shit. Um, are you expecting the same rhythm this year? I think so. The eastern suburbs is generally pretty tight with stock, you know, for the most part. And so especially the prestige department. There's, there's never, you know, an oversupply of prestige properties in the market at any given time. But most agents, I think, will be conditioning their vendors that, okay, like after the school holidays, let's let's press go on a campaign for spring. Um, you know, it's generally like the spring selling the best time. They'll paint that picture. So I think there will be a bit more stock coming on do then. You, yeah, but do you, uh, Tammy, do you think that um, some vendors are saying, wow, um, we've had a 30% rise in some places for property prices over the last 12 months. It's probably going to come off, um, maybe I should go and sell now before this major drop occurs. 
because I really think it's going to be Armageddon between here and sometime late next year. Do, are there are there vendors out there thinking that? Because I saw I saw um, Hugh Jackman today announced that he's selling his New York apartment, three levels, eight, nine, and ten, in the middle of New York. It's uh, something like a thousand square meter apartment, and. Uh, what I heard is he's selling it because he thinks if he, he sells now, he'll make it much more money if, compared to if he sells in a year or, or 80 months time. And by the way, he's selling for 35 million US. Um, so that's what the price is, that's the asking price. Do you think people are starting to think that? Because you know, that's an expensive place. Um, you know, in Sydney, East suburbs, as you said, is an expensive area. Um, are there vendors out there thinking that, wow, I better get out in August, September before things turn it on again, or you, they're all pretty cool? Absolutely. I think it's a mixed bag. There's definitely people with that mindset. And again, they, they rely on real estate agents, you know, to sort of tell them what's happening. Um, so, yeah, I, I think generally the holidays are quite a period. I mean, obviously the last two years, no one's been able to travel. So we haven't really seen the dip as much. Uh, but it's it's winter. A lot of people are away. So if you are a vendor and you're thinking about putting your property in the market, you're probably, unless you've bought and you have to sell, you're probably not going to be doing it right now in the thick of winter when, you know, a whole pool of your buyers might be traveling. They might be traveling around Australia. They might be overseas. Um, you'd want to do it when you, you feel like you're maximizing it. And I think there's there's probably going to be a slight rush in that August, September, and it'll be interesting to see what sort of happens after that. So you're, do you would you say to your buyers then, that's who you're talking to, um, hang out. Uh, I expect a whole lot of property to come on the market. You're not going to be held to it, but come towards the end of August, September. Um, that period, maybe because there's going to be a lot more places on the market for sale, you, the buyer, or your client, might have a better opportunity actually to snag something for a good price. Or do you just say to your buyer, hey, listen, if you've got the approval, go buy now. If you find the right joint, buy it. What, what do you say in terms of timing? That's it. I'll always be super honest with my clients. I'll say to them, look, you, you're welcome to sign up now. We can start the process. There's no rush from my end. I'm never about sort of pushing a client off my books. I want to get them the best result. So sign up now. I'll start showing you what's out there. I'm just giving you warning that it's probably going to be a little bit quieter going into this school holiday period where everyone's away. Um, but let's start looking now. If we find something great, and it's the right thing, it's the right fit at the right price, perfect. Um, if not, we'll just keep going and, and see if there's a bit more that comes on. Yeah, so the, the old saying is, for any market to exist, that is where the demand and the demand and supply curve cross each other, you get a price on the, on the axis. You've got to have a willing buyer and a willing seller. And during boom periods, the willing seller usually has high expectations of their price. And they're saying to the, the vendor's agent, which is the opposite side to you, listen, I want this price. And the vendor's agent saying, yeah, oh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get it. In fact, there's 50 people lined up for a contract. I reckon you can ask you know, more money. You know, you probably get more money and people start bidding. You know? That's during good times. During bad times or tougher times, particularly when there's high interest rates and lots of market talk and lots of commentary chatter, the market turns from a vendor's market to a buyer's market when um, the vendor's got to meet the buyer because the buyer's saying, you know what, I'm not prepared to pay that price. I'm not that excited about uh, putting another half a million dollars on my purchase price just because there's 50 people lined up because now there's only five people lined up. Correct. When does that, are you starting to see that crossover period coming our, our way? Like in other words, is um, Buyers starting to move, ascend into the dominant position. Has, has that crossover happened yet, or is it because it has been a vendor's market? Is that starting to is it level, or is it sort of starting to tip in favour of the buyers now? Absolutely, I definitely think it's more in favour of the buyers at the moment, and it's getting more and more so. Again, it just depends on the type of property. As, as I mentioned, you know, prestige property doesn't really get as like as affected as the lower end stock. Um, because there's never a lot of it. And, and most people are just, you know, who are buying the prestige, prestige homes. They, you know, if, if it's the right property, they just want to get their family a home and they're not as too, you know, affected by it. Um, definitely the lower end stock, I, I think there's a bit more of that um, sort of sentiment with, with buyers and sellers. And it just comes down to as well, you know, how well the agent has positioned their vendor. We're seeing a lot of agents, 
you know, telling a vendor that can get a certain price and over pitching it. Um, so a vendor's expectation to, to give this agent the business is that they're, you know, going to get a premium result. And then, you know, they might take the property to the market and it's then the agent's job to actually condition the vendor and go, okay, well, the buyers actually aren't there. And that can be really tough. So, you know, it's, it's, it's mentally a big hit for some owners when they're, ex when they got told they'll get a certain price.